Alexa, stop. Greetings, my brother. This is greetings, my brother and sisters. Uh, can you guys hear me? Uh, can you guys hear me clearly? Got a new set of headphones. So I just want to make sure everyone can hear me clearly before I get started. Does someone say yes for me, please? Okay, cool. Thank yes. you. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I got an exciting addition today. Um, and it's going to be heavy, but it's definitely going to be a blessing to you. Um, but before we get into the word of the Lord, today, um, let us pray so our heart to get into a place to receive all that King Jesus has appointed us to do. Okay, so without further ado, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Wise Father, we repent of our sins. Please forgive us our sins. We come for your throne. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your life. We thank you for who you are. Father, you're worthy of blessings, power, riches, and glory forever and ever. Lord, you are faithful to every word that you've spoken. And your word will not come back to you, Lord. Lord, and I pray today um, that we will open our hearts to do to you because your word is trustworthy. I pray that our hearts will be in humility to trust everything we hear that come from heaven because your word never fails. And because your word never fails, that means that we build our life on your word. We would never fail because we live with you. Lord, help us speak freely, have your way, say everything you want. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Um, have your way. Uh, decrease us right now that we may increase in you that as you speak, Lord, we will only see you. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your faithfulness and all that you do and all that you bring and all that you pour In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Uh, well, my brothers and sisters, let's get into this word, okay? Um, as I've been spending time with King Jesus, he's been speaking to me concerning his heart, okay? As I've been spending time with King Jesus, he's been speaking to me concerning his heart. And my brothers and sisters, one thing our life has to be built off of is this one thing. God's word is faithful. Our life has to be built off of God's word and our confidence has to be built off of that God's word is faithful. And God said, in this hour, I am revealing my word. That was prophesied over 2,000 years ago. And it's happening in your environment. It is happening on your job. It is happening as you open up your Bible and see what I've been saying. And the King Jesus says, you see what I have been saying, that, what, that which is already written. Then watch this. Let your confidence be in me. Um, because my brother and sister, the whole point of me, Revealing these prophecies is that those who believe may increase their faith. Oh. That those who believe may increase their faith in the one who revealed it. Oh. And that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? And as I've been considering the Lord, the Lord paid me a visit this morning as King Jesus visited uh, this morning, revealed some things to me in the spiritual realm, in the heavens. He says, son, let your eternal life that I have given you through my sacrifice be your greatest priority. Oh, let eternal life that I have given you through my sacrifice be your greater greatest priority. Because as it as it is your greatest priority, then you will see my life as your greatest friend. Oh, you will see my life as your greatest friend because my life is me and me. The King Jesus said, and I am life. And as you see me. As your greatest friend, then you will watch this anchor yourself in the life that I have given you because only in my life can you be my friend. Oh, because in order for you to be my friend, you must live and not die. And Jesus said, in this hour, the one where government is uh, moving in deception to try to cause many to walk in death so they can't be my friend. But you, I have revealed to you, my father, will that you may become my friend and live with me forever and so as we consider that my brothers and sisters let our minds be edified and built on christ okay now last week in part one we spoke about and if you did not uh, uh, hear part one i pray that you go back and listen to part one um of uh the environment before the great tribulation last week i'm gonna pull up my sheet last week we talked about information oh last week we talked about the information corrupt information what uh they will be doing but this week we're gonna talk about this week we're gonna talk specifically about 
they said part two will be about the successful future right last week we talked about the world the uh, world government summit and the war government summit said that uh they they want to build a new faith and the people not in a religious way but in a way of man creation oh uh, and they said three things of how they would build it and the first thing last week we talked about corrupt information but this week the lord is going to have me tell you about their plan part two is which is a successful future so this week we're going to talk about the environment uh the environment before the great tribulation part two which is watch this a successful future they're gonna give they're gonna try to give man a successful future through deception part two will be about a successful future through deception that is what they're gonna try to give man a successful future through deception right and everyone that will everyone that be and everyone that is deceived will believe it is a successful future, but in reality, they will be up on a deception. And it is very important because watch this, the corrupt information that we talked about last week is what's gonna drive men, watch this, to believe in this successful future through deception. I pray that we hear in this, right? The, the false and corrupt information is what's gonna drive men to put their faith in a successful future through deception. Because our ears is the gateway to our soul. That's why we have to guard our ears and guard our eyes. Because what we hear and see matter, right? So the information we, the corrupt information that people hear, if they don't know Christ, it will corrupt their heart. It will, watch this, it will play on the corruption in their heart already. But this week, what we're going to talk about is the successful future. It's going to attack what they see and make them follow what have been placed in their heart. Oh. Right, and it's very important, my brothers and sisters. It is very important that we see what is going on. Okay, so let's talk about part two this week the environment of the great tribulation, which is a successful future. They're going to try to give man a successful future through deception. Okay, and we're going to go through a few articles, we're going to go through a few articles. But I'm going to be, I'm going to go for I'm going to begin to share my screen and I'm going to show you my brothers and sisters what is really about to happen, what is really about to take place because right now as we see what is, as, as right now as, well, as we see what is going on in Russia and Ukraine, it is setting the foundation uh, for a lot of things that are happening in the earth. Okay? Now, what is all this about? Why the Build Back Better World? What Joe Biden is talking about? Why are uh, Ukraine and Russia? Okay, now if you have been paying attention in the news this week, if you watch the news, you might have seen that Joe Biden uh, have created a a, a miss a disinformation board a, or a misinformation governance board, where they want to govern misinformation. Oh, uh, okay. Now, why is that important, my brother and sister? You might ask, well, brother, why is it important? Because we're going to go right to the book of Revelation and show you how in everything they're doing for him creating a governance board, it's just not coming from the Biden administration, but it's coming from the global leaders from the one world government because this is going to be a part of a successful future. They're going to say in order for us to have a successful future, there got to be transparency for us to attack misinformation. And the whole point of attacking misinformation is to watch this, put blinders on people so they won't hear the truth of what they are really doing. So they're going to call misinformation conspiracy. They're going to call misinformation, watch this, a, watch this, a lie. But in reality, it would be the truth exposing what they're doing. So right now, they are right now uh, trying to uh, put out a framework to attack misinformation because during the Great Tribulation, as we move forward in this hour leading to the second coming of Christ Jesus, they're going to try to call us who preach the truth, that's misinformation. They're going to try to say that, how can that be the truth when it's coming against the world peace? Sad. 
But we have to understand that true peace is walking in the way of God. True peace is being in love with God. True peace is our life being built on Christ. So let me begin to share. Let me begin to share my screen. Oh, I share my screen, my brother. So let me begin to show you this. I'm going to show you what happened this week, what Joe Biden had said. Watch this, what is going on. I want you to pay close attention to this video. And let me know if you can't hear it or not, because I really want you to hear what is going on. They tried to cancel me. They tried to shut me up. And they failed. America. Information Governance Board in the Department of Homeland Security to more effectively. Um... We're all controlled by Big Brother and, and the state told you what the truth was actually in their mind, which was the truth accepted. Now, the people had no say in any of it. They were forced to listen and they were forced to follow. Now, Orwell's book was meant as a warning to the world that this kind of society could become reality under the wrong people if the wrong people were in charge. But it looks like the Biden administration is taking Orwell's work not as a warning, but as their own manual. Now, yesterday, the White House announced a brand new department called the Disinformation Governments Board. I'm not kidding. A board aimed towards tackling disinformation ahead of the 2022 midterm elections. Here's Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas confirming it yesterday. Watch. We have just established a mis- and disinformation governance board in the Department of Homeland Security to more effectively um, combat uh, this threat, not only to election security, uh, but to our homeland security. We are uh, addressing all aspects of election security, um, given, of course, the midterm elections that are upon us and the fundamental uh, integrity of our democratic processes that is at stake. Now, DHS says the group was meant to focus on misinformation about Russia, irregular migration too, but we can read between the lines. This disinformation push is going to extend to all facets of free speech. We've seen this drill. Here's Jen Psaki today dodging that question. Can you give us an idea of what this board is going to be doing, what their authority would look like? Have sure, it. Jackie. I really haven't dug into this exactly. I mean, we, of course, support this effort, but let me see if I can get more specifics. We know that there has been a range of disinfo out there about a range of topics, I mean, including COVID, for example, and also elections and eligibility. But I will, I will check and see if there's more specifics. There's she doesn't want to dig into it yet. Here's the real deal. Democrats are looking down the barrel of a giant midterm clobbering in November. Their own pollsters are saying it. And after Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter this week, they have lost their grip over the one thing that helped them win in 2020 more than anything else, perhaps, control over big tech. So now they're desperate and they're willing to do anything to hold on to this power. And they see it slipping away, even if it means creating a state-led censorship division, where instead of relying on big tech, They'll just do it themselves. So Joe Biden's goal is to control the discourse and soften the blow come the midterms. Censor anyone that points out the obvious that de democratic policies so far have failed the American people spectacularly. Force out anyone that points to his mishandling of the border, his record on how. Now, watch this, my brothers and sisters. Now, watch this. Okay? Now, I want you to watch this closely now. Watch this closely now. This man have created a uh, disinformation board. Now, why is it important that he created a disinformation board? Okay? Why is it important to my brothers and sisters? Okay? Because watch this. This is not only about the election in the midterm, right? These people watch this. Want to come watch this? The Holy Spirit been telling us the whole time that in this hour that they're gonna watch this control the America, the uh, the mainstream media of America. Most of mainstream media will be controlled. Will be government control, but there will be media that will be a part of the remnant of the church uh, that will come against, that will have a outspoken, that will have a outspoken, that will have a outspoken word. But watch this: some, watch this, some would cave in to the pressure of globalism, and watch this, call people when they speak out against these things, different dis disinformation. So what what does God have to say about this? What does the Bible say about this? Because watch this. We talked about this week, it would be like they said, the first thing, they got to believe the information is correct. But they also got to believe that we're going to give them hope for a successful future. So soon you're going to see leaders around the world come out and say, hey, in order for us to have a successful future, we must tackle disinformation. 
Because watch this, they're gonna say this information is what divide us, right? And we're gonna have to watch this. They're gonna say, they're gonna say, we all have to speak the same language, same language for us to grow together in humanity as a people. Watch this. So in order for us to have a successful hope to a successful future, we must all speak the same language. We must all come together. We must kill all this information that separate us. Watch this. And then they're going to go forward and say, even our religious differences, right? And so they say, in order for us to tackle this information, watch this, we have to have transparency in the information that is being given. Which means if the information go against their agenda, go against their narrative, then it is this information because watch this, only their narrative is not divisive. Oh, they're going to call a deceptive, they're going to call a deceptive, uh, uh, they, they're going to call, they're going to call for unity through deception. Oh, they're going to call for unity through deception. And they're going to say, watch this, in order for us to have uh, in order for us to have a successful future, we must be transparent and all be against this information. Now let's go to the Bible. The book of Revelation chapter 12, it would, it, it, uh, would give us this foundation and tell us what's going, to go on, going on. Watch this. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, 12, it says, watch this. Uh, it says, uh, therefore rejoice, O heaven, you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth, and see, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. So right now, what is going on in the spiritual spiritual realm? Satan knows in the spiritual realm, right now, Jesus is a few years, a few years away. He reads the Bible. He knows the Bible. So right now, he knows that Jesus is a few years away uh, from coming. And right now, he got to move swiftly to watch this, to try to push his plan to deceive the world Watch this to try to bring the world against Jesus at his second coming. Okay. Now, why is that important? Because you can see the whole world is moving swiftly towards global government, swiftly towards, towards uh, the mandate of globalism and laws and policies, right? Now, watch this. The global elitists want a world war so they can accelerate their agenda. So because Satan know that his time is short, he know there's got to be a, watch this, a catastrophic crisis, a catastrophic crisis so that this can go on, go on to accelerate. Let me give you an example. The one world government, United Nations, have this general called 2030, 2030 Sustainable Development Goal. Why 2030? Why we need everything tackled by 2030? Why do we need to have everything implemented and try to push our 2030 development goal. Because Satan knows that he is going to be bound for a thousand years. So he the one gave them this 2030 agenda. Why? Right? Because God has cut Satan time short. Because if he did not cut Satan time short, and if he really allowed for these people to get where they want to go, Jesus said in Matthew 24, if it was possible, even the very elect would be deceived. So if go and do research after we get off the line today, it's called a 2030 Sustainable Development Goal, where they want to give everybody, number every human being, to give them a digital identity, a digital ID, and tackle climate change to have all these things in place by 2030. So you might say, well, brother, why is this important? Why are they pushing everything by 2030? Why? Is uh, uh, America uh, moving in the way it's, it's going right now? Why the inflation? Watch this. We have a globalist in the White House that believe in this 2030 agenda that comes from the United Nations. And they're going to say soon that, watch this, in order, watch this, after this great war, after this great war, World War Three, that's about to happen, that we are drifting to, after this war happened, Every, the human beings of this earth who do not love Jesus is going to be in the cry and say, man, look at this catastrophic war. Look what just happened. We need hope. Where's the success is going to be? Man, how am I going to do this? How am I going to go to college? How am I going to build this legacy for my children? How am I going to do all the Where's the hope? The whole world is going to be a, those who don't know Jesus, is going to be in a state of cry. Watch this. After this war, I'm talking about when this war happened, the whole city, watch this. It's God to show me the whole city is going to be wiped out. Watch this. And people are going to be in such a cry for a successful future.
because it's going to look as if it no hope. And that's when, watch this, the man of sin is going to creep on the scene and say, hey, here's the hope for a successful future. And they're going to say, hey, in order for us to have a successful future, y'all need to believe that we need to tackle disinformation. We need to tackle our religious differences. We need to tackle, watch this, everything that divides us. That's what they're going to say. And so everything you're seeing, what is happening in with Ukraine and Russia's, and watch this shaking the false peace of this world to make man cry from a place of fear for a successful future. That's why last week they said, hey, they got to believe the information, right? And why? And so in order for them people to believe the information that they're giving, giving they must make the people believe the, the, the true stuff that they are hearing is this information because they want them to believe the false information. And that they get people with the corrupt information that say, hey, we got to make them believe that we have a solution for a successful future after the crisis. So we can see right now, but Joe Biden moving to, hey, create a government board, board and they do, they know that they're going to have a, a fight in the midterm election, but it's also coming down the pipe for uh, coming down the pipe uh, uh, from the one world government, but they also know that a election in America coming in another in another two years for the president, and so they're trying to push everything they can. They're trying to push everything they can and do everything they can to watch this have everything in place because the global leaders and the United Nations saying that hey, well, we don't know what's going to happen in America next election, so we need to do everything we can now while America have a friend, a globalist in the office, so that we can push our global agenda in America. So the reason why we're going to see in 2022, we're going to see a shift change towards globalism and one world religion because Satan have a short amount of time. Revelation 12, 12 tells us that, right? And so watch this. God spoke to me um, and he been visiting the Lord Jesus been speaking to me all day. He said that this, this environment, what's what he said? He said they will be, uh, uh, they will be, yeah, he said they will be looking uh, for successful hope after this war and they're going to push their 2030 agenda. Okay, now watch what Revelation 12, 9 says. Revelation 12, 9, watch this. And I'm gonna start at verse seven. It said, now, now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angel fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that serpent of old who is called the devil and Satan. The deceiver of the world, he was thrown down to the earth and his angel was thrown down with him. Pause. God in Revelation 12, verse 9, calls Satan the deceiver, watch this, the deceiver of the earth. So what is, what is going to be the environment before the great, tribula great tribulation and what's going to be the environment in the great tribulation? Deception. God is giving us a sneak peek of what's going to happen. It says Satan is the deceiver of the world. So God is telling us right now in 2022, in this seven-year period, lead, in this seven-year period, leading up to the second coming of Christ Jesus that we are in. Watch what he's saying, that this environment is going to be full of deception. It says Satan is the deceiver of the earth. So watch this. They are going to build a successful future based upon deception. They're going to build a success. They're going to try to say that successful, in order for us to have a successful future, we must believe in ourselves. Watch this now. Mm -mm -mm. And people watch this in a in a place of weakness and despair. Watch it because they don't turn to God for hope. They want to exalt themselves because in this environment, the, the, the Bible said that this the spirit of the Antichrist is at work. And so because the spirit of the Antichrist is at work, God said the man of sin is going to come on the scene uh, when it, in, in standing in the third temple and exalt himself as God. So the man of sin is the man of flesh. The man of sin is the man of deception. So watch this. The environment is going to be based on the deception of man's heart. Now, why is it important? Because God is telling us, watch this, because the man of sin is uh, is, is operating, is going to be inhabited by Satan, that means the whole environment before the great tribulation is going to be pushing laws of deception. Watch this, pushing agendas of deception. Watch this, building a hope and a successful future through deception because he is deceived of the world. So if God is telling, if God is telling us in Revelation 12, 9, he's the seed of the world, that means the Ukraine, Russia world, the Ukraine and Russia world, Ukraine and Russia war 
It's the foundation that is going to lead this world. So watch this. A solution for hope through deception. And the sad part about it, it will be to put their feet in deception. Oh, watch this now. They're going to watch this call successful, a successful future. They're going to call deception a successful future. Right? And they're going to call laws that are abominable. Watch this. Ways that cause man. They're going to say, watch this. Mark this word. I want you to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you, saying to us. You're going to see world leaders come on the scene. Watch this as we get move toward the end of 2022 going out of 2023. You're going to hear leaders come to the news and say, we need to believe in ourselves. We need to turn to ourselves. Watch this. So that we can have hope in one another. Say and most people that don't know what, know what is being said, I'm like, wow, we do need to believe in each other. We do need to believe in, believe in each other. And what's happening? Man is exalting himself instead of God. And because of that, watch this. Man is going to put falsely, put hope in uh, in what he created instead of what God created. And going to say that, hey, let us create our own utopia that we may have a successful future forever. Say. And so watch this. This thing of what Biden is doing for governing disinformation, watch this, is coming from the top tier of the global establishment, the global leaders, the people that are sitting behind right now as we I'm speaking to you, they're sitting in offices having phone conversation right now talking to one another about global government. Watch this. King Jesus took me in the spirit. King Jesus took me in the spirit and showed me a city wiped out. And as he showed me this city wiped out, completely wiped out, watch this. The global leaders, the one world government took over the media and governed everything. They was able to watch this. They are able to cut it off if it don't match their agenda. Watch this. Watch this. They're able to cut off what you see if it don't match their agenda. But watch this. God have a remnant that's going to have their own media that people are going to turn to. And it's going to be the Bible. And watch this. And we, my brothers and sisters, watch this, have to know that success is not in what we create. But success, success a successful future is not in what we create through technology. Oh. But a successful future is being is living for God, glory by His sacrifice. Okay? And this 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 attack on this information, watch this, because the church is going to be speaking out. Satan knows that. Watch this, the church is going to be speaking out. Watch this, because Revelation also tells us that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. So, what is God saying about the church? He telling on some. He telling us on one end that. The global leaders is going to lie through deception to create a false hope for a successful future. But he also said that the remnant church is going to be on fire and they're going to overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. So what is the environment of the church? Because the enemy is doing something, but God is great and he's going to be doing something. So what the church is going to be doing? So what God is saying that on one hand, there's, there's, there's going to be a great war against light and dark. There's going to be a great war with light and darkness. On one hand, the media is going to be saying, hey, let's attack this information. And the church is, why does it say it's that overcome by the uh, blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony? So the church is going to be using media, watch this, to testify of the blood of Jesus, to testify of the sacrifices of Jesus. There's going to be media outlets that is not going to cave in to the one world government, but they're going to bring real men and women of God to testify about the cross, to testify about the cross, to also testify about what is really going on on the media. So there's going to be a great war. Media that are less right now, some of them are going to rise up. God is going to rise them up and let truth come out of the media. And so that's when it's going to be this catastrophic shift. On one hand, the, world, the one world government is controlling their narrative. But watch this. The remnant church is going to have their media that's going to push out the true narrative. There's going to be this great war that the Antichrist is going to try to come against us. But watch this. He would never prevail. How do we know? Because the Bible said, watch this, the gates of hell will never prevail over the church. So though he would try to press us, get us, the spirit of God is going to be a fortified city around us to let God will go for it, even when it costs us our life. So that's what we have to understand. This is what's going to happen. This is what is happening in this hour. Okay. So, uh, so they said they have to get them to believe that we, uh, that we giving them hope for a successful future. Watch this. So if they say that we they got to get us to believe in a hopeful, successful future, 
and it's going to come from deception. That means they got to get us to believe in deception to make us cry. They got to make us uh, believe in deception by making us cry for hope. Oh. But if you have Jesus, you know you already have hope. You, you know you already have hope, so you don't have to cry for the deception when you already feel with the truth. Oh, let's keep moving forward now. Let's keep moving forward. This thing heavy now. Okay. Now, uh, uh, now let me go to what I mean. Let me go back to uh, um, uh, now. We've seen what Joe Biden just recently did. What he's trying to do. Now, let me show you in regards to. Uh, 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 what they're saying at the Russia State TV saying. Watch this. And I'm just showing you this. This is not going to be what Schneider Freight Power, the online marketplace, has expanded capacity for truckload less than truckload. Или мы проигрываем на Украине, или начинает третья мировая. Лично я считаю наиболее более реалистичным путь третьей мировой. Ну потому что зная нас, зная нашего руководителя Путина Владимира Владимировича. Вот самое невероятное, что в конце концов все это закончится ядерным ударом, мне представляется все же более вероятным, чем вот такое развитие событий. К ужасу моему, с одной стороны, с другой стороны, к пониманию, что, ну что, значит так. Знаешь, меня... Но мы это в рай. Да. Меня... А они просто а, Или мы проигрываем на Украине, или начинается Третья мировая. Лично я считаю наиболее более реалистичным путь Третьей мировой. Ну, потому что, зная нас, зная нашего руководителя Путина Владимира Владимировича, вот сам... This is the evidence that these four angels have been released from the great Euphrates River. So the one world government are already saying that we need to have them build a, a hope in a successful future. So in order for them to be a hope in a successful future through one world government and government control over the whole world, but them trying to put government control over the whole world, they must cause something happen to take people the, 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 see, because people put trust in what they have, things, car, clothes, house, jobs, cars, watch this, when they, when this world gets struck with World War and it look like it at stake, people are going to panic because they hope within what they had instead of Jesus. And when people feel like they're, they're what they have is at stake, whether it's 401ks, whether it's what you've been saving all your life, whether it's your job, when people feel like they're at stake because they love money instead of God, because they love the things of this life, life instead of God, when they feel like that is taken away, they feel like they have no hope for a successful future. So the global leaders are planning this great war, planning these, uh, planning these uh, diseases and many different things to watch this, to rob people, to make people feel like they're being robbed of a successful, successful future. So once they rob them of it temporarily, they're going to reveal, like, come out with a technology system, blockchain system, and say, hey, here it goes. You can have everything back. You know what people will do? Watch this. They will submit to this, all those who don't know Christ. Because the Bible tells us those who have not been written in the Lamb Book of Life shall be deceived, right? Because they did not love the truth. God said, I was in a strong delusion to prove that they love darkness instead of light. Now watch this. Listen, now this is show you. Look at this lady, what she's saying. She said that uh, at the end of this, this war may not end unless it's a nuclear strike, right? Now, we don't know. We Watch this. They said that they don't know uh, unless it's a nuclear strike. And then she said, then she go forward to say, uh, then she go forward to say, uh, well, you know what? It is what it is. We all got to die someday. We'll go to heaven and they'll just crow. So she, you see that? You see the deception in the heart. If we launch a nuclear attack, uh, and strike a nuclear weapon and wipe out a whole city, kill millions of people. She said that we're going to go to heaven and they'll die. Same. This is the type of deception people are on. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that the love of many will wax cold. Well, some, somebody said that their country can launch a nuclear missile to kill millions of people and then say that they're going to go to heaven. Sad. The worst type of deception. Why is that important? What is that revealing? That God's word is faithful. In Revelation 12, what did it say? That Satan is the deceiver of the world. And so because this lady is up on a deception, she's saying if when we when I would lead a lunch a nuclear weapon, that we all gonna go to heaven. Sad. Sad. Do you hear what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters? These are what I'm, what is going on. Why? Because the Bible tells us that they're gonna be a a a, a hope for a successful future through deception. And in order for the one world government to do that, they have to have a major crisis to make people believe it. Sad. Okay. Okay. It's very important, my brother and sister, what is happening right now in the earth. And watch this. We must pay attention because don't it will catch us as a thief in the night. Okay. 
Now, one of Russian missiles, Russia even named one of its missional is is, is uh, uh it's gonna launch, it's gonna deploy a missile called the Satan Two in the fall. They call this a missile, it's a missile, it's a missile a Satan. It's crazy. And how Putin said, America, you need to stop uh, uh, arming Ukraine. And Joe Biden said that we're gonna give. He's seeking 33 billion to help Ukraine. See what I'm saying? You can see how this building, because Russia got allies in the Middle East, America got allies in the Middle East. So you gotta watch how this thing is building little bit by little bit, but in reality, the whole, if it's not gonna be with Ukraine and Russia, the whole world is gonna be engulfed in it. And so while the Lord wants us to uh, see what is going on, because the whole aim of this, the whole aim of this is to do, uh, the whole aim of, aim of this is to do, to do this one thing, to get man to put hope to believe that they have the hope for a successful future. Everything you see happen in your neighborhoods, from the crime and violence, they talk about the fund of police, and how the crime and violence is rising, from uh, the laws, the, elite, the corrupt laws that they're passing from Ukraine and Russia. Why are all these things simultaneously happening at the same time? Because they are right now on the move to make the people believe that they have hope for a successful future. Okay? And so it's very important that you know what is going on? And so what else the Lord is telling us? Revelation 12, chapter 17, verse 17. It said, watch this. Give me one second. It said, then the dragon became furious. I'm starting verse 16. But the earth came to him. I'm starting verse 15. I'm sorry. The serpent poured out water like a river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. It's talking about uh, 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 Israel. But the earth came to the help of the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured out from his environment. Poured out from his environment. I'm sorry, I gotta let someone in. Uh, per, per, uh, poured out from their environment. Poured out, poured out from his mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went out to make war on the rest of her offspring. Watch this. Watch this. On those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus, and he stood on the sand of the sea. Watch this. So God is also telling us the environment. Uh, of the great tribulation that the whole environment for them build a so when they build hope in a successful future leading up to the great tribulation what else uh, uh, that uh, or goes, what else is going to be attached to this plan so they're going to that the plan that's going to uh that they're going to have engraved to be a successful future watch this is to persecute the same watch this the environment that's going to be built that this environment is going to be built around persecuting the saints. Watch this. Then the dragon became furious with the woman that went off to make war with the rest of her offspring. Watch this. Everybody know that it said that God gave Abraham a seed. That seed is Jesus. And whoever have faith in King Jesus is his offspring by faith. Watch this. And because we is his offspring by having faith in him, because through him we are children of God, Satan is going to make war with us because we have faith in the one little true God. So you want to why that they want to pass laws like the Equality Act. You, you want to why why this administration is, 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 is coming against states that stand up against abortion. You want to why that they're coming against the, uh, the president of Florida that's come, that, are, that is standing up against uh, same sex trying to indoctrinate, trying to indoctrinate people kids. You want to know why the radical, radical left is coming against people who are trying to push biblical val values. Why is the world so bent on pushing same sex on children? Why are they so bent on defunding the police? Why are they so bent on legalizing drugs? Why are they so bent on watch the indoctrinating our kids in school? Why are they so bent on these things? God told us why. He told us that, watch this, that Satan is going to make war against the offspring of Jesus. So God is telling us this environment, the laws and the environment where they're going to pass, everybody that every governor, everybody that don't love the truth, they're going to pass laws to persecute the church. And the sad part of what about it is, if the church, if we don't wake up and come out of our flesh, we'll vote people in office that's going to pass legislation to come against us. Let me give you an example. Like Joe Biden want to pass the Equality Act to want, watch this, if you're a Christian doctor, and if you don't believe that a man should be a woman, then they can try to take your license. They can try to take your license because you believe that God created a man to be a man and a woman to be a woman, right? Then it's just not with the Biden administration only. Why is Biden administration doing? Because the world, one world government believe that, watch this, there should be gender equality. So this one world government is going to be a abominable uh, uh, one world government to say pedophiles okay. They're going to say same sex is going to say okay. They're going to say if you don't, 
drugs is okay. Let us just watch this past laws to make you do it in a safe place so you won't do it in bad places. Sad. Why is it important? Because they're going to call a successful future, a hope for a successful future is you doing, for, you doing whatever you want. They're going to call, that's why the Great Tribulation is going to be so corrupt because they're going to say that you doing whatever you think in your mind and your heart is, is a successful future. Why? Because he is the deceiver of the world. He said he's going to do it. This environment, he said Satan is the deceiver of the world and he's going to come to make war against the saints. So you're going to see that, watch this, people is going to be, become more anti-Bible. They're going to become more anti-Christ because they're going to follow the anti-Christ. But the people that are called by, because watch this, the anti-Christ just going to be doing things. We don't give them no glory. The church is going to be having the greatest revival is ever seen. So watch this, everyone that God knows that's going to call upon his name, when they hear the church preaching the truth, they're not going to follow one word of me. You're going to see a great revival in the church of people who are in the streets, people who was rolled off, rolled off people who people look down on. They're going to all begin to come to the church. Watch this. When Jesus walked the earth, he told his disciples, I must go and gather my children who are not in the fold, but they're going to come in. So a lot of people that you see are uh, homeless, people that you see not homeless, but are in the streets like I was, but got saved. You're going to see God watch this, bring them in the body of Christ. And a lot of people that are religious, but don't really follow Christ and follow the flesh, sadly, we be conforming to this world. And so we got to see there's a great separation that has happened in the wheat from the tares. So watch this. If them watch this, creating a hope for a successful future will also be a sword in the earth showing that who is really for God and who is for not. Because we're not, watch this, God is in control. So on one hand, Satan will be doing his evil, but watch this, God is going to be gathering his sheep together from all around the world. Well, this is going to be the greatest revival this world have ever seen. And so why is it important? Because church, watch this, if we don't see what they're doing, we will follow what they're doing. Oh, if we don't see what they're doing, if we don't understand what they're doing, we're going to follow what they're doing. Why? Because this is the hour where Satan would deceive the world. And so the only way to overcome deception is the truth. If I don't know the truth of what they're doing, I'm going to be deceived by what, I, what they're doing because I'm going to believe what they're doing is the truth. Oh, but watch this. When you have the word of the testimony, which is Jesus, and you have the blood of the lamb in you to have saved your life from sin, and you know he is real. Watch this. He will reveal the realness that is what is going on that you be like, hold up. That is not hope in a successful future. That is hope, a false hope of deception. Now watch this. When you know that, you'll be able to save other people around you because you'll be able to give them the testimony of Jesus. Very important. Okay? Jesus said the dragon became furious of the woman, went off to make war of the rest of their offspring. So watch this. In this hour, it's telling that Satan is going to be furious in this hour, and it's going to be the worst deception you have ever seen. But watch this. The remnant is going to have the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Strong arming. Strong arming. Doing miracles and a lot of signs and wonders to bring people to the truth. Ask me how I know, because God has took me in the spirit and revealed a lot of these things to me. Watch this. I can't say too much, but the King Jesus paid me a visit this morning, uh, a visit this morning uh, uh, in, his, in, the, in the spiritual realm, showing me, watch this, that his word is faithful and can be trusted. And my brother says, after what he showed me this morning, and after what is written already in his word, watch this. Don't doubt what God is saying to you right now. Because in 2022 and 2023, watch, you finna see everything that we're talking about. And you be like, man, man, what is happening? What is going on? And I'm telling you, my brother and sister, this is the time to be sober and this is the time to be vigilant. Now, let's keep moving forward. Now, let me show you what China is doing. Okay? I'm going to show you what China is doing. Then we're going to get to some of these articles. And when I show you some of these articles, boy, you're going to be like, yeah. Can you feel that? Because watch this. That's your body, baby. We pause this. I'm going to show you some article, articles that is not on mainstream. And you're going to really see how the mainstream news control the narrative. Let's go. It's telling you to breathe. So China is giving more weapons to Pakistan, but they're nothing like what we're about to show you. Chinese soldiers stationed along the border with India have some new weapons. They were struggling to operate in high altitudes in the difficult climatic conditions. So China is bringing in robots to help. You heard that right. China is deploying robotic weapons along the border with India. There are machine guns on wheels and they can be fired 
with the remote control. Beijing's decision to give robots to the PLA could have dangerous implications, not just for this region, but for the rest of the world too. Our next report tells you how. There is a new threat from China. It is not a battalion of soldiers or wolf warrior diplomats. It's these machines. Initially, they would remind you of remote control car toys. But look closely, these robots can do a lot more. They are equipped with the machine gun. Chinese soldiers can fire this gun from a distance and without any wires. There are cameras too, to watch what the adversaries are doing. China calls this vehicle the Shark Claw. 88 of these have been deployed in Tibet. Shark Claw has a partner. It's the Mule 200. This is a transport vehicle, so not as lethal as the Shark Claw, but the Mule would be very useful for the PLA. It can be used to transport valuable supplies like ammunition. China has deployed around 120 of these in Tibet. Robots are now joining the People's Liberation Army. Their induction is a prelude to something more sinister. For now, a soldier will operate these robots. But in the future, China wants weapons with a mind of their own. The PLA wants weapons with artificial intelligence. Beijing is moving swiftly to acquire such capabilities. The efforts began in 2017, when China unveiled a new artificial intelligence development plan. It advocated the use of AI in the military. Specific applications were listed out, like providing support to command and decision-making military deductions, and development of defense equipment and related application. Private sector was roped in to accelerate these efforts. Chinese big tech companies like Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent, Xiaomi, and Huawei were labeled as AI champions. The PLA stands to benefit from the rapid strides these companies make. Already, different wings of the Chinese military are working on specific projects. The PLA ground force is developing robotics for the military. The Navy is working on autonomous submarines, while the Air Force is developing drones with an ability to think. These advancements should raise an alarm worldwide. Unfortunately, world powers are still ignoring the threat. This month, the United Nations tried to open negotiations for an international treaty on autonomous weapons. They failed. None of major weapons producing countries were willing to have a conversation. These stonewalling tactics work to Beijing's advantage. The PLA gets more time to perfect the AI technology and develop killer robots. Weapons that could make the world a more dangerous place. Bureau report, we on World is One. And so, my brothers and sisters, watch this. Why is this important? Why, why, why are they just, man, is so bent on creating things to kill and destruction? Why? Revelation 12 tell us that Satan is furious. Watch this, he wants to deceive the world. And so, the, the, this in the spiritual realm, there's a great evil to cause a great catastrophic, catastrophic crisis. Watch this. So man can cry for hope for a successful future. But we have to understand that God has put an expiration date on this world because King Jesus is going to come reign for a thousand years and forevermore. And so my brother and the sister, why is all this happening? Because watch this. They want to create a pretense a, for a hope for a successful future. And that's why it's very important for us to know what is going on, what is happening, that these rumors of wars and these things of what is happening in our environment, they are happening by design and not by chance. They're happening, watch this, because they know they got to get people to believe that they need hope for a successful future. And, and that is what this is heading to. So my brother and sister, watch this. 
Let me exit this off right here. Let me exit this off, and then we're gonna go to some of these articles, okay? It's very important, my brothers and sisters, very important what is happening. So let me keep moving forward, okay? Let me keep moving forward uh, and show you some of these, and show you some of these articles. So you some thing what is happening. And then uh, a sister in the faith sent me one picture, a sister in the faith sent me one picture how uh, one lady and her boyfriend, uh, Megan Fox and Machine and Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly, they drinking each other blood, what? Out of a ritual, right? Do you see the deception and things that are happening is out, right? Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us that the deception of this hour, brother, I'm telling you, they're gonna call it success in a uh, successful future is you doing whatever you want to do. and people will be doing whatever they think and, and that's what that is what's going to make it corrupt because watch this man heart is a corrupt outside of Christ watch this us who have been redeemed from our sin remember the way we used to live before we met Jesus do you remember how, how we desired sin and we were running and do everything that is sinful then imagine watch this people living that way under the auspice, they believe that it's correct and they can do whatever they want because it's a successful future. Sad. And that is the line of deception of the spirit of the Antichrist in this hour. That's why it's important for the church to rise up and tell the truth. And so we got to hear what is going on. God is teaching us an environment. So when you see these things happening, you won't be alarmed, but you'll begin to pray, get ready to speak the truth so revival can happen. Okay. And so uh, the CEO of Goyu Foods is now warning about a global food crisis. Food wars. Russia banned fertilizer exports to crush global markets. Hungary bans all grain exports. Early this week, Tucker Carlson invited our corn and soybean farmer ben, ben on his top-rated program to discuss the massive inflation we're about to see in food prices here at home. According to recent grocery prices may increase up to a thousand dollars per month due to Russia sanctions of fertilizer. Due to Russia sanctions of fertilizer. Okay, it's embarrassing how little to most people know about fertilizer, what it means, tell us implications, sanction card asks. Soaring fertilizer prices are likely to spike food prices, uh, Russia said. If you're upset that gas is up a dollar or two a gallon, wait until your grocery bill is up to a thousand dollars a month. And may it not manifest itself in terms of price, uh, of, of, of price, it could be quantity as well. Empty shelf syndrome must just be started. I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure I heard you correctly, up to a thousand dollars a month in credit card next. Now watch this. This is not for us to be feel, fearful because God said, seek first the kingdom of God. God said, don't worry about what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna drink, because the world worried about it, because the Father knows what you need before you even ask him. So God is our protector, he's a, our provider, so we don't have to fear what is being said. Let us call, let it call us to trust in God's word all the more. But we must be aware of what they're doing. So the question is, why the inflation? Why, why is going on with the inflation? The growing food was it the price of growing my crops or major crops, corn, soybean, wheat, rice, cotton, are up to 30 to 40 percent. They are on my farm. And most fertilizer, nitrogen prices are up three times from the from the left crop, the left crop we put in. First potassium we doubled. Okay. So why is it important, brothers and sisters? Things are about to get real thanks to Joe Biden's foreign policies failure. Now, why is that important, my brothers and sisters? Why? Why are these things happen? Is it happening by chance? What are the global what are the global leaders using Ukraine and Russia to do? To create a cry for a, a solution, a hope in man's heart. To what? To seek a successful future by worshiping what is created. Watch this. Global leaders have said in recent years, and even now they are saying, in order for us to, to gain control of their of a nation. We got to get control of their money and their food. Why? Because you know some of us, some of us idolize money, some of us idolize food, and we have to get to a place that we don't idolize money or food. Because if they clamp, watch this. We have to be in a place where if I don't eat, if I don't have money, I got Jesus. Why? Because I reign. I'm a reign forever, sitting in His throne. We have to have faith that it's Christ alone. That food is not my God, money is not my God, because Jesus is my God. Because, watch this, these are what global leaders saying, right? And so if we have hope in Jesus that he will provide for us, he's going to take care of us. And watch this, and even if we don't see a bill, we're not going to take the mark of the beast. We're not going to conform to their agenda of a successful future because we know our future is in God and reigning with him and living for him and his kingdom and his house forever. But this is why you, all these things are happening by design. Why? 
because the, at the World Government Summit, they said they have to get us to believe that we have hope for a successful future. Well, we must first make them believe that their future is at stake. Oh, in order for us to make them believe um, that they have a successful future, we, that we have the hope for a successful future, we must make all men that their future is at stake. Well, if, the, if, if we who believe in Christ don't see our future in the earth, why? Because God have told us that this earth is not your home, but you are citizens of heaven, that you are not people of this earth, that, but you are sojourners passing through. So as we don't see this as our home, and if we don't believe that this is our final resting place, then we don't have to fear and look for their solution. But if we look to this earth as our home, you know what? We will be amongst the people saying, man, we need a successful future. Because because the church future is not in this earth, then we won't believe the we won't believe the lie what they're trying to do to make us believe in a successful future. Because in order for man to cry for a hope for a successful future, you must you must first make their future at stake. That's why Ukraine and Russia. That's why the global uh, inflation. That's why the food crisis. They're doing all of these things by design. Let's keep moving forward. True statement, my brothers and sisters, should be received with full assembly. And again, this is not for you to fear, but this is for you to know so you won't fear. Watch this. Cleveland, um, WJW, the future is here. Those tired of taking out their wallet or phone to pay for things can now skip that step entirely thanks to a new implantable payment chip. While the technology is only allowed to be sold in countries in the European Union and UK, the British police company Wallet More has created a microchip that can be implanted inside a person's hand and used as one would tap, take it, tap a credit card for payment. The implant can be used to pay for a drink on the beach in Rio, a coffee in New York, a haircut in Paris, or at your local grocery store. Finance chief executive told BBC it can be used wherever contactless payment or acceptance. The company said it's first to sell these kind of chips to willing customers unleashing the, the biopolymer technology by the uh, about the size of a small safety pin on the world last year. The cost is a $300. But just how many people are right now with the idea of having a sense of credit card placed in their body? Why the so Why more said in press release that so far at least 200 people have purchased this technology. Sad. According to the 21 survey, which talked the 4,000 people across Europe, nearly 51% said they would consider an implant of some type. That's sad. Yet security issues reportedly remain a concern for some. Wallet Moore explained their chips use near field communication or an NFC, the same system the smartphone used for contactless payment, that they cannot be read until they're in close contact with a payment reader device. The company said the chip does not include a battery, nor does it uh, make radio waves on its own. My brother and sister, you see what is happening. Okay. Why is it important? Why why did he say, well, brother, what does it got to do with hope for a successful future? What does it got to do with that? Because one after this crisis, they're going to say that, watch this. We have to do these things to have a successful future. Watch this. We have to watch this. They're going to say, the global elite is going to say, they're already doing it now. Like last week, we talked about how they're talking about humans can be hacked. The dude talking about where humans can be hacked. Right, like uh, Elon Musk want to put a neural uh, uh, microchips in people's brain. Watch this. They're going to say that. Watch this. We have to become one with technology. We have to become one with the internet. Watch this. They're going to say that technology. Watch this. It's the hope for a successful future. They're going to say technology, the creation that men are creating. We are creating some solution to bring this. They're going to say that we are creating technology to bring us from this crisis. Then they're going to say, we have to become one with technology through transparency. Sad. And they're going to say that this is the hope for a successful future. Well, watch this. The 40% remnant of America is going to come against these things. That's why you see different governors and different people rising up and say, hey, you're not going to rob us of our freedom in our state. Why? So God is raising up a remnant that's going to push it back. They say, you ain't putting this in my body. That's why you see global leaders, the radical left in America, want to want to holler racism to say that we need to tap that we need to change the constitution. Why? Because they know the Constitution of America said that you can't force this on people. So they want to attack the Constitution. That's why you're going to see 40% of Americans going to say, hold on, we're going to uphold the Constitution in our state. You can do what you want. They're going to, so I'm going to be like, y'all can do what y'all want, but watch this. As for my state, 
uh oh we're gonna uphold the constitution we have our rights you're not gonna force us to put nothing in our body you gotta hear, hear, what, hear what the holy spirit is saying that's why it's important for the church to know where how we are in some of us don't know where how we are in some of us is, don't know that Jesus second coming a few years away that's why church is time for us to come back and believe because some of we say that hey jesus is coming soon we know but he ain't coming no time soon that is going to be a rude awakening for some of us because some of us have put Jesus. We we said we would believe, but we really don't. We said that we believe Jesus coming soon, but we really hoping that He delay a little bit so we so we can live live out the rest of our life here on this earth. That can't be our heart posture because right now, my brothers, it's time for us to really see and humble ourselves. Like man, Jesus is coming soon. Only when our heart get in that place, we'll really see what is going on. But we really longer to be in this life, we were deceived by the solution that they're gonna call false life. Okay, it's very important, my brothers and sisters. Okay? Make sure nobody ain't trying to be let in. Okay, so let's keep moving forward. Okay, okay we talked about uh, Joe Biden pushing information to uh, uh, to uh, when he uh, he asking. Go to it real quick. Give me one second. Okay. Biden administration is openly pursuing a policy escalation in Ukraine. Oh, Ukraine. What are we to make a make of a comment Monday from Secretary of Defense Law Austin that Biden administration go to Ukraine to see Russia weaken to the degree that it can't do kinds of do the th kind of things that it has done invade the Ukraine. I also made the remark excuse me, in a press conference with Secretary of State answered the blinker after the pair met with the Ukraine President Biden by Zelensky in Kiev and what was the highest level visit by the U.S. official since Russia invaded in Ukraine late February. On the obvious conclusion we can draw from Austin commi commitment is that the Biden administration have now committed openly to a policy of escalating escalation in Ukraine. The White House intends to keep the war in Ukraine alive with the stated goal of weakening Moscow by continuing to pour new and more advanced weaponry in a war ravaged country. Austin and Blinken announced new, a new round of military aid to Ukraine, bringing the total amount of U.S. assistance to about $3.7 billion since the invasion began. After resisting pressure early in the conflict to supply Ukraine with advanced weapons systems, the Biden administration has changed its course. It's now preparing to send heavy artillery, helicopters, armored personnel carriers, anti-aircraft radar systems, advanced attack drones, and other weapons. Why is it important? Remember the Holy Spirit been telling us, when this war break out, world leaders and some of them, some of America, the world leaders of America will be like, man, I wasn't trying to start a war. The World War III is going to break out. See, it's going to be wiped out. Watch this. And you're going to hear the elite say, we wasn't trying to start a war. We were trying to protect people. But in reality, they was trying to start a war. Right? And I just wanted to show you what the Holy Spirit is saying to us and what is really happening. Let's keep moving forward, my brothers and sisters. Keep moving forward. Give me one second. UN approves marriages requiring states to justify PO. Yo, now watch this. The Joe Biden administration. So, if you've been in the army, I don't know if you know about the UN Security Council. But at the UN, the five victor nations of World War II have veto power. If it's a resolution that they don't like or they don't agree upon, they can just veto it and don't pass. So, right now, they're using the Ukraine Russia war to say that the five member states need to lose their veto. veto. They need to justify the veto. Why is it important? Because the United Nations, the United Nations saying, the United Nations is saying that, uh, the United Nations is saying that they need teeth. Watch this. The United Nations is saying that they need teeth, that they need teeth to enforce. The book of Daniel over 2,000 years ago said that the one world government would be a dread, a dread for one world government. Let me go to it real quick in the book of Daniel. So let me show you what is going on right now. Everything you're seeing happening right now, that's why we got to know where all we are in. Because by these this prophecy that have been written over 2,000, 3,000 years ago is happening right now in 2022. And we don't see it, but God is telling the church, wake up, my babies. I'm coming soon. I'm showing you that this was happening over 3,000 years ago. And if I said it and it happened, like I said, over 3,000 years ago, that means when I say I'm coming back for you, that's true as well. And if we will really see God's word come to pass, watch this, we'll trust God as it come to pass. And we will be so on fire for God because we seeing what he said is true because he is true. Watch this. Daniel 7, chapter, Daniel 7, chapter uh, 4. Uh, give me one second. Uh, that's the first beast. Let me go to this fourth beast. Give me 
one second. Daniel chapter 7, uh, verse 7. Uh, uh, it said, After this I saw a night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful, and exceeding strong. It had great iron teeth, and it divided and broke the piece and snapped what was left in the feet. It was different from all the other beasts that were before, and it had ten horns. It's talking about the ten kings. After this crisis, you're going to see, after this next crisis of World War Three, you're going to see ten victor nations rise up. You're going to see 10 victor nations rise up, and these 10 kings is going to be given power with the Antichrist to have authority over the world to help govern the world. Now, watch this. It said that this, Daniel said that uh, it devoured and broke the peace and stamped what was left. And if he, it was different for all other, uh, it said, watch this, terrifying and dreadful. I want to, it said it had great iron teeth so right now the one world government have been hiring hollering it's it's amazing how god told us what they're gonna what's gonna come out of their lips before they even said it god said well two thousand years ago that they're gonna have great iron teeth so what god is saying is there's gonna be a one world government rise up but they're gonna have teeth wow and so right they're gonna have iron teeth so the one world government have been crying for years and they're crying right now to say listen we got resolution we got the 2030 agenda, but we don't have teeth. To, we don't have teeth. What are they saying? They're saying that we don't have the power to enforce it. Why? Because the victor nations, the, the world powers, they have veto. They can stop what we say. So we need teeth to enforce it. Mm -hmm. So after this, what? After this crisis, what they're doing right now is working on the teeth of the one world government. And the victor nations, watch this, it's going to be given a seat to govern the world if they allow for the one world government to get their teeth. The one world government is going to make a deal with the global leaders. They're going to say, they're going to say, hey, if you, if, if, if you give us full authority and force our agenda to inside of your nation, we'll give you seat to govern the whole world. Sad. And you know what these world leaders are going to do? They're going to accept it. So right now, they're using the Ukraine-Russian war to say that, hey, you need to have a justification for your veto. Meaning you need to have a justifier means, watch this, to veto our bill. And watch this, your justification got to be approved and we got to agree that it is justifiable. So if it's not justifiable, then you don't have the right to veto our bill. So when an international criminal court said that we have to sanction every human being don't agree with our bill, watch this, that means if it is a personal citizen in your own state, in your own city, then watch this, you can't veto our bill because it is unjustifiable because we it don't agree with what we're doing. You know what they're going to say? This is our standard and this is our foundation for the hope for a successful future. Say it. Let's read it. The, one, the 193 members of the United Nations General Assembly adopted by consensus Tuesday a resolution required the five permanent members of the Security Council to justify the use of veto. You know what? You know what? The Joe Biden, the Joe Biden administration it is in agreement with this. Let's keep moving forward. The push to push for reform, which was greeted with the applause in the chambers, was revived by Russia invasion of Ukraine. So they're using this crisis. Man, it's crazy, man. The, me the measure is intended to make veto holders the United States, China, Russia, France, and Britain pay a higher political price when they use the veto to strike down Security Council resolution, said an ambassador who asked to remain anonymous. It is unclear if the five permanent members will use their veto less or more as they could propose controversial text. They know their rivals will veto only to force them then to justify their stance publicly. First proposed proposed more than two years ago, the measure provided for the General Assembly to be convened within 10 working days after a veto to hold a debate on the situation as as to which veto was cast according to the text. Almost 100 countries joined in the co-sponsoring the respawn, including, watch this, the United States. See? The last administration would have never done that because the last administration be believed America is a free country. The last minute, it's not about pro Trump or pro Biden. This is a pro Bible. The last administration said, "Hold up, America is a free country. We're not going to be a part of your global thing where you tell America what to do." But this administration said that America want to leave behind. So the administration, the White House, believed that America should follow what they say. Sad. Okay. General Assembly is seeing. Watch this. So uh, 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 almost a hundred countries joined 
and co-sponsored the reform, including the United States, Britain, France, and a rapid rally of support that caused widespread surprise at the UN. See what's happening? Neither Russia nor China were among the sponsors, though a diplomat for one of the two countries who asked not to name criticized the move, saying it would divide the UN even further. Not directed at Russia. Okay. The marriage would create a new procedure, said Ambassador uh, who insisted the proposal is not against anyone. It is not directed against Russia. He said, despite the fact that the proposal revival came as the Security Council has proven incapable of condemning Russia and based Ukraine. So you know what? You're, you, the U.S. is saying we, the, we was created to govern the world, but we can't even stand against what Russia is doing because the Russia is going to veto everything we say. I said, due to Moscow's veto power. From the United States perspective, Russia has abused its right for veto for two decades and proposed the text intended to remedy the situation. Said the text aimed to promote a role of the United Nations to promote to promote multilateralism and to promote the voice of all of us who are not veto holders and who are not on the Security Council on the matters of international peace and security. Oh, what the Paul said in First Thessalonians 5. Out of peace and safety, sudden destruction is gonna come. So they said, in order for us to have a successful future for hope, watch this. We have to have peace and safety through transparency. Oh. And so in order for the world to have peace and safety, the United Nations have to have uh, full control and justification over veto power in order for the world to abide in peace and safety. Okay. Why? Because there's only one way in peace. And that has been, that, that is only one way to have true peace and safety. That is being saved from the wrath of God because being right with God is true peace. Watch this. The text is non binding and nothing prevents a country that had used its veto from declining to explain its actions to the General Assembly. But in application, would shed light on the use of the veto and on the blockages within the Security Council, said one ambassador on the condition of anonymity. In addition to his five permanent members, the Security Council also have 10 members elected for two years with the, without the right for Peter. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Look at what this said. In addition to the five members, the Security Council also has 10 members elected for two years without the right of veto. Among the co sponsors, the resolution were in addition to the Ukraine, both Japan and Germany, which are hoping to become permanent members in the potential uh, in large Security Council. Now, look at that number 10. They said there's five permanent members but also had 10 members elected without the right of veto. What did the book of Revelation tell us? That there will be 10 kings rise up. It said that they don't have authority yet. Oh, it said that these 10 kings will rise up, but they don't have authority yet. Let me reread this article. In addition to the five permanent members, the Security Council also have 10 members elected for two years without the right to veto. They don't have power yet, but watch this. They don't have power yet. Now, I'm not saying that these 10 kings are the, the 10 kings that will rise up. But what I am saying to you, that it's already in the heart of the globalists to have 10 kings on the scene. Oh, watch this. They were prophesied over 10,000 years ago. Let me read. Man, let me reread read this article slow to you, boy. Let me uh, read. It said Revelation 13, 1. And I saw a beast rise out of the sea. With what? Ten horns. Not two, not three, not five, not eight, not nine. But it said he had ten horns. Let me go back to this article again, what we see right now. This Bible said this over 2,000 years ago. But what, let me show you what God is saying, what they're saying right now. But the application, watch it, in addition to the five permanent members, the security master also had 10 members elected for two years without the right to veto. veto. Oh. So the five permanent members have power because they have veto. These 10 other members don't have power because they don't have veto. Watch this. There are 10 kings to the side right now. They don't have power, power yet. But when the Antichrist come on the scene, they're going to be given power. And look at what this article is saying. Oh. So let me tell you something. If God said this over 2,000 years ago, and we see it happening right now in 2021 on 2022 on the article, God said this over 2,000 years ago. And we see it right here in the article. Right? Again, I'm not saying this. It, these are the 10 kings. But what I am saying it, it's already in the heart of the United Nations because God said it, what they would do before they doing it in Revelation 13. Now, why is this important, my brothers and sisters? Why is this important? Because what does this got to do with it? Because God is showing us the environment before the Great Tribulation. Because this environment is what's going to dominate the Great Tribulation. This environment, what they're building right now, 
in the world is what's going to dominate the uh, in the Great Tribulation. See, they are being in the environment now, but in the Great Tribulation, it's going to be let loose through deception. So when the Antichrist comes on the scene, he just cannot build an environment. Then he only going to have three and a half years to reign. The Bible said the Great Tribulation lasts three and a half years. It's going to be the Great Tribulation for three and a half years, and trust me, that's long enough. And so he can't come and try to uh, implement, build something when he only got three and a half years to reign. That means it have to already be in place before he reigns. So they are building, the world is building the environment for the Antichrist. Because in order for him to be the man of solution, there have to be a crisis first. So all of the crisis right now is building the environment for the Great Tribulation. So the man of sin is going to come in and sing. It's going to give the world the, the, the hope for a successful future. Sad. And so that's why we have to know what is going on. And, and I just, this should incre increase, I mean, this should increase our faith, my brothers and sisters. That the God word is true. When we see them talking about these members ain't having power and God said it, that will happen. But let's keep going in these articles, my brothers and sisters. Make sure everybody got to be let in. Let's keep moving forward. God word ain't nothing to play with, man. They just took my head off how they said about them 10. And again, I'm not saying that's a 10 king, but I'm showing, the Lord is showing us that their heart is already in their place. Let's, let's let's read this. Let's read more in detail about this Joe Biden misinformation board. Disinformation board. Keep moving forward. Okay. After Joe Biden was declared the winner of the 2022 presidential election, independent journalist Glenn Greenwald, Glenn Greenwald predicted that the Democrats would use the force of the government to crack down on conservative reporting under the guise of combating national security threat. Say it. Now, President Biden, Department of Homeland Security is reportedly working to create a disinformation governance board to counter what they determine as false information related to national security. Oh, on Wednesday, Politico reported that the Department of Homeland Security is creating the board to coordinate countering misinformation related to Homeland Security focused on specifically irregular migration and Russia. You see how they use the Russia as a weapon to control narratives. You see, you, do you see what is going? The Holy Spirit been telling us that everything is driving toward World War III. But watch this. God told me, watch this. Watch after this war. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. After this war takes off fully, a whole wow, wow, whole city gonna be wiped out. Watch this, and you're gonna see the world become one. Watch this. You're gonna see the world become one, and you're gonna see a lot of the mainstream media say, "Hey." Let's put aside our differences and we need to come into a global media. Watch this. And they're gonna and the world is gonna be one through the media. God have already showed me and he took me in the spirit. And I'm watching the whole news. Jesus took me in the spirit. And as I watched this city, I watched the whole city get completely blue to smell and destroyed. I was the Lord had me watching. And as I'm watching, I'm looking at the cameras. I can I, I can see even the colors of the cameras. I can the Lord, let me rephrase it. The Holy Spirit, let me say this in the most humble way. The Holy Spirit was revealed to me because I don't want you to look at me. I'm just a man. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit been saying. The Holy Spirit showed me them taking over the camels. He showed me them, he showed me them coming and controlling the narrow. So watch this. After this war, the Holy Spirit is telling us right here, not Brother Ralph, the Holy Spirit, because I'm submitted to this word, just what is going for. The Holy Spirit said, watch this. They're going to control the whole, the whole media. Majority of the media is going to become one. And do you see right here, they saying because of and because of on irregular migration in Russia. So the what this ain't just coming from the Biden administration. This is coming from the global leaders at the United Nations, Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum, the people who are planning to hack humans. They are all in cahoots. And they're saying, watch this. We need to tackle misinformation. You best believe they're listening to people like me that speak out against them. You know, I okay, thank you, Lord. They're listening to true people that expose what they're going on. So they're going behind the scenes and saying, hey, well, you know what? We need to tackle misinformation. You hear what I'm saying, my brother and sister? And they're using this crisis in Russia to do it. Mina will now reportedly head to the DHS board as executive director, was one of the prominent liberals who, liberals who appear to believe that the device was Russia disinformation. While Russia has certainly been guilty of putting out, putting out disinformation, around the globe, American intelligent officials have also labeled factual information like Hunter Biden's laptop as Russian propaganda as well. Even the mainstream media now admits that the contents of the laptop were real. In March 2024, 
they tweeted that the intelligence community has a higher degree of confidence that the criminally used proxies to push influent narratives, including misleading or unsubstantiated claims about the president violence to use to US media official and influence some someone close to President Trump. They could not allegedly uh, hunt a laptop she put she um positioned positive. It's unclear what she suggested was misleading and unsubstantiated with regard to the laptop. When she sent that tweet, various media outlets at the time had not dug into the veracity of its content. The media, the media uh, appeared to accept the face value of the intelligence community false report that it it was Russian disinformation. Russian disinformation. Twitter also infamously blocked the story from its site based on information from intelligence community uh, community members. Consider also that on November 16, 2020, former President Barack Obama stated that combination of government revelation and corporate press was needed to control the internet. Let me repeat that. President Barack Obama stated that a combination of government regulations and corporate practice was needed to be controlled, needed to control the internet. There's no question that the Democrats are giving up to use their power to apply far more pressure than ever on Facebook, Google, Twitter, et cetera, to censor any views they deem threatened journalists, Greenwald tweeted, the Daily Caller noted, please look at what is going on here. He added, Democrats are defining whoever opposes them, not as adversary, but as national security threats, fascist terrorists, et cetera, all to justify blocking them from the internet using the influence with the Silicon Valley. And so my brothers, so this is what we have to understand what is going on. That all of this, they're gonna say that these things are to build a successful future. Watch this. Biden says students are all our children when they're in classroom and people are horrified. Watch this. They wanna, he said this to say that we love children, that we should, they are all our children that we look out of them. But watch this, President Joe Biden horrified many on social media when he proclaimed that students are the children of everyone that when they're in the classroom. Home, he made the comments at the White House Wednesday as he and the first lady host 22 National State Teachers of the Year. You've heard me say it many times about our children, but it's true, they're all our children. And the reason you're Teachers of the Year is that you recognize that, said Biden. They're not somebody else's children, he claimed. They're like yours when they're in your classroom. By the odds, they become at the time many parents are fighting against local school boards that are implementing controversial policy they dis they disagree with, including critical race theory, sex, gender, lesson plans, and transgender rules. While Biden meant the statement to express how much the government cares for the children's school, many social media angrily rejected his uh, affirmation of ownership over children. Now watch this. We know we all been in school, but some teacher did see you as see you as their children. And they had a genuine hot posture towards that, okay. And so I'm not going to negate that some keep, some teachers don't see you as their children, see you as their children, because I had teachers that would see me as their children, and they were trying to lead me the right way, to keep me from the wrong way. But some of these people that are globalists don't mean it the same way. They mean it from a place of indoctrinating our children with corruption. And so I'm not. So what I'm saying is we need to be season who we allow to see our children in their classroom because some people don't have our best children children uh interests at heart they see indoctrinating them with same sex indoctrinating them with, you know, with radical left critical race theory they see indoctrinating them with globalism is what they see now i'm not going to say every teacher is like that because you do got some good teacher that really do brain children up honor them as, as their children, but they ain't trying to indoctrinate your kid with corruption. They're trying to literally teach your kid the truth. But you got some that want to indoctrinate their kid and want to teach you what they believe, which is corruption. So I pray that we be in prayer over who we allow to embrace our kids because some want to embrace our kids to corruption, but you got some do want to embrace our kids in truth. So as we see this article, we have to be careful when some leaders come out and speak like this because they don't really mean it the way that we that some of us think they might. Okay? That's why the Lord had me bring it up. Because the one world government uh, is gonna see children and the people of this world as citizens of the one world government. And as they see you as citizens of the one world government, they're gonna believe you gotta follow same sex, follow their laws, follow their corruption, do what they do, believe in every way can get you to heaven, believe that if you believe that you can do what you want, you can say what you say, that is what they, believe and if you allow your children to embrace globalism then it will embrace the corruption of the great tribulation okay. Okay. 
keep moving forward. Okay. Pennsylvania Democrat, there shouldn't be any limits on abortion. Sad. Okay. Okay. A Pennsylvania Democrat running for the Senate said one day he does not believe there should be any limits on abortion. But I said, uh, May March during the Pennsylvania Democrat state debate on Monday, he strongly emphasized his support for women's reproductive freedom. If I aim in the United States Senate, I will immediately support the first campaign to support the elimination of the filibuster to make sure that we codify women's reproductive freedom in law to make sure that even if the Supreme Court does go down the road to a vote Roe versus Wade, that we already existingly codified that into law and made sure that we can't go back, he said, saying, according to the video footage, the research. Okay. Let's play this video real quick. If I'm in the United States Senate, I would immediately support the first campaign to support the elimination of the filibuster to make sure that we codify women's reproductive freedom in law to make sure that even if the Supreme Court does go down that road and uh, eliminate or re re revoke Roe v. Wade, that we already existingly codify that into law and make sure that we can't go back. Abortions are going to continue in America whether it's legal or not. They just won't be safe if they're illegal, and we can't ever go back to that. We just can't. And are there any limits on abortion you would find appropriate? I, I don't believe so, no. Look at that. So you see that corruption, my brothers and sisters. Say he don't believe that there should be a limit on abortion. It should be abortion should be be in place, period. But these people are so ain't you ain't look at me forty weeks, the child can be full blown in the room and they can just let the child sit there and die. Right? If that ain't the money, I don't know what it is. And I'm telling my brothers and sisters why it's important because they're gonna tap all of these when they have their rights towards their body parts and uh, they're going to call all of this finances. This is the type of corruption, my brothers and sisters. So, my brothers and sisters, I want to hear about it. Uh, share these things. Uh, uh, So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you one more article. Uh, give me one second. Uh, I'm gonna show you one more article. This uh, uh, Russia, uh, Russia openly talking about World War Three. Talk about that. Russia's Minister Collins, if you're speaking, I, I can't hear you. I don't know what's. Okay, give me one second. I don't know what's going on. Give me one second. You can't hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. So let me go back and share my screen. It's an Breaking up again. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay. 
Jews today are considered impure to the highest degrees as if they in that case, the ashes of a red heifer are required in order to purify oneself, but none existed that meet the requirement. Okay. Uh, they stipulate that Jews, uh, 11 imperial, are still allowed on the Temple Mount up until the outer edge of the Temple itself, given that they purify themselves from imperial bodily fluids such as semen, menstrual blood, by bathing in, a, in the ritual bath. Hence, performing of the ascension to the Temple Mount argued that as long as the people bathe and maintain their purity thereafter, they may visit the areas on the mountain that are outside of the realm of the ancient temple itself. Okay. Following the six-day war, the chief rabbi of the military, Gorham mapped out the compound to show that showed what areas were considered outside of the realm that therefore permissible for Jews to traverse. Okay. Uh, 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 Christian Islamic tradition, which is identified the foundation stone under the dome of the rock, part of the holiest of holies, and the temple itself roughly as being the raised, the raised area in the center of the compound. This enabled Jews to circle the lower level of the compound without entering the prohibited areas. Now, why is I'm bringing this up, my brothers and sisters? Why, why is this important about the Temple Mount? Because right now, they're becoming a big force about the Temple Mount. There's becoming a uh, big fuss about the Temple Mount where the, the Palestinians, Hamas, they're talking about Israel is planning to divide the Temple Mount, uh, uh, divide the Temple Mount to build a synagogue there. Why is that important? Why am I even bringing this up? What does this got to do with the hope for a successful future? Because after this crisis, my brother and sister, and watch this, during this crisis, my brother and sister, they're going to say that we need to put aside our religious differences. And they believe that Jerusalem is the center, that they believe that the conflict in Jerusalem need to be tackled so the world can see what peace looked like amongst religions. And so the global leader, the international leader is going to come together and say, we need to do something about the temple now. They need to put on a sharing arrangement, and they're going to say that they have to accept it. And they're making big fuss about their planning to divide the Temple Mount of Jerusalem. So the one-world government, instead of for, in order for peace, in order for world peace as well, we need Jerusalem to be a place of world peace and their Temple Mount need to put on a shadow arrangement. What's gonna drive it there? Abraham, the house, world war religion, and al -Bidati. And because after this world war, that's gonna be the foundation of what they push for religion. My brothers and sisters, this is all I have today. I pray that this word was a blessing. The word was a blessing to you, and I pray that it leads you into everlasting life. Uh, my brothers and sisters, if there if there is any questions, if there is any fear, my brothers and sisters, be uh, let it not let you not be fearful because God didn't give us this word for us to fear, but He gave us this word for us to have hope and be free. My brothers and sisters, this is all I have for you today. Okay, so is there any questions? Is there any questions, my brothers and sisters? Okay, okay. And so, if there's not any questions, I, I don't. Um, this is um, this is Sister Katina. I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to share. I know you was talking about, um, you know, don't let anybody, just anybody, speak with your kids and stuff like that. I will say that my son Noah has has a teacher, Miss Wagner, and she started a program at the school. Is and it's as before is. The kids still have an opportunity to ride the bus and participate, but she started a program where she's teaching the kids about Jesus. Amen. And it is happening at the high school too. And I think what is happening is they're allowing these teachers to do it, but they have to do it before, you know, class starts so that they, they'll have that opportunity to, to go in and, and to have those discussions with those children. And so, I, I mean, I really love Ms. Wagner because she's, she's always encouraging the kids. Right. She's all, and she's always asking the parents, she said, hey, tell me something about your child that I can share with them today in the classroom. So I like that about Ms. Wagner that, you know, despite what's happening in the schools with, you know, they want you to change the pronouns and all of that. She's still standing firm on her own, the word of God. And then she's allowing these these kids, you know, she said, even if they ride the bus, I'll still have an opportunity for them to come to my classroom and for us to have that conversation about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen, sis. We thank you so, so much for sharing because, right, and, and, and that's why I was stating earlier that some teachers do are doing the right thing, but watch it, like you said, be led, know those teachers who are doing what is right for our children. 
Uh, and if we don't have anything else, just continue. Could you pray? Could you pray us out if there is no questions, anything? Yes. All hearts and minds are clear. Father God, we thank you, we love you, and we honor you. God, we thank you for breathing the breath of life into us on today, oh God. God, we ask that you remove anything from us, oh God, that will hinder us from hearing this word, oh God, accepting this word, oh God, and believing this word, oh God. God, I just ask that you continue to cover Minister Collins, God. Continue to use him as your vessel, God. Cover his family, oh God. God, move obstacles out of his way, God, that he can continue to do your word. And God, we ask that, God, that, we, that he do not get discouraged, God, Oh, and the normal yeah. people that show up on the Zoom, God, because we know you have called him for such a time oh, as this. Yeah, so and those that need to hear the word, God, will be on to hear oh, the word. And God, that oh, those that are on, God, that they begin to share your yeah. word with other people, God, God, that we not be afraid, oh God, because the world is doing some crazy things right now, God, but that if we stand firm in you, oh God, you be in us, oh God. And God, we just ask that you cover us and keep us. God, I pray a special prayer for those that are on this line, oh God, those that were on the line, oh God. God, touch their hearts, touch their mind. God, give them the desires of their heart, oh God, because God, they were faithful enough, God, to come on tonight yes. in support of the ministry, oh God. And God, I just ask you to continue to be in our midst, continue to cover us, continue to keep your arms of protection around us, and God, to humble us. God, to humble us so that we know that when it is you that is working, God, and that we don't get in your way as uh -huh. you are trying to do things in uh -huh. our lives, oh God. Let that humbleness and that humility show, oh God, so that we don't be trying to block the things of you because we have been deceived by the devil. Oh my God. Uh -huh. God, I thank you and I love you. Yes, God, I bless you and I honor you. God, I thank you for life, health, and strength. God, yes, God, I thank you for just being God. God, I thank you for the things that I'm going through, God, because I know you're going to get the glory. God, I thank you and I love you. And God, I ask that you continue to cover us and keep us and it's in your son Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Love you, sis. Amen. Love you. Love you. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. God bless you.